Hi everyone, I'm Cornelius from Cons Investing and thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel. In this tutorial, I'll be focusing on seven simple successful investing rules which when applied will make you more money and grow your wealth over the long term. And this is regardless of whether you're a first time or experienced investor. Investing isn't easy, otherwise we'll all be millionaires by now, but it can be made a lot simpler. There are several books about investment psychology or behavioral investing, but they all have one common thread. How can you balance your emotions with your investment objectivity? The list of rules suggested in this video are a good starting point, particularly for investors still getting to grips with how the markets behave. Most of us know what we should do, but our emotions tend to get the better of us. So if you missed my previous videos on stock market investing for beginners, please make sure you check out the videos from the info card above or via the links in the description below. You can also like or subscribe to my channel for further updates and leave any questions you may have in the comments below. So let's get started. First up is best ideas only. So assuming you have got your portfolio started with funds or ETFs and you're now looking to add to your portfolio individual stocks or shares, you should only be looking to invest your very best ideas. You should try not to be swayed by the markets and the hype or what the latest hot stock is, which is may have gone up 60% in one day alone, because there's a lot of information which can cause bias and quite often investors spread their money across hundreds of different stocks which are just too many to manage. And if you find yourself doing this and having a portfolio of say over 60 or 70 stocks, then you should be asking yourself the question, should it have just been simple to just buy a fund to capture all of this spread? If you have a high level of conviction for a particular stock, then you should avoid the temptation of going all in. You should avoid the temptation of the fear of missing out because everyone is talking about it. Because the shares of a certain technology stock were five times oversubscribed at the initial public offerings and because bad luck can happen by going all in. So you can consider spreading your investments evenly to avoid the risk of one big idea going horribly wrong and sinking your whole portfolio. And this is by taking advantage of dollar or pound cost averaging, which we covered in one of my previous videos and ensuring that it works for you. Next up is about being a hands-off investor. Given the high levels of uncertainty and volatility in the stock market, it is very easy for investors to feel the need to fiddle with their portfolios, fiddle with their holdings, trading in and out of position and incurring significant dealing charges. I must admit, I've been guilty of overtrading by trying to time the market in the past. I sold at the wrong times, incurred significant losses which impacted my overall portfolio. But having learned from it, I wouldn't want any potential investor like yourself to repeat such mistakes. Some of the most successful investors such as Warren Buffett and star fund managers as Terry Smith or Tom Slater have got a common formula to invest in which is to find good companies, don't overpay and do nothing. As you can see, the results of their portfolio speak volumes with compounded returns of over 500% growth over the last 20 years. So don't check your portfolio every day. If you're genuinely investing for the long term, look at the portfolio once or even quarterly and don't get sucked into the lots of buying and selling because you feel you ought to be doing something or because the market has reacted in a certain way. You need to be disciplined, controlled and stay rigorous to your investment process. Next up is about sticking to your guns and stay invested. Contrary to what some people may say, there is no way to reliably time the market and there will be periods when your stock would have setbacks. There are loads of people who think they can time it and will be able to decide the exact right point to buy into a share. Even professional investors fail to time the market accurately every time. So your chances of being able to predict when the market will hit its peak or drop are pretty slim and it could mean you end up buying at the wrong point or just leaving your money in cash for months while you wait for the right opportunity. So in essence, emotional detachment counts significantly to enable you to get compounded returns. So you don't get shaken by out of your convictions or if your strategy which worked six months ago is not working now as compounding and big gains only come with you being really patient with it. And by the way, if you're finding value from this video, please hit the like button and subscribe button below. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to respond to you. Up next is about setting alerts. Having said not to trade for the sake of it and to stick with your conviction, there is one exception to this rule. And that is if there is a material change in the fortunes or the outlook of one of your holdings where you need to review it. And this could be a fundamental change to the company's business model, an industry shift, or a change in consumer demand which would impact the growth prospects and the returns of the company. So for example, on the back of this post-COVID pandemic, there has now been a shift to e-commerce activities 
and working from home has become the new norm going forward and this is expected to be the way going forward for a long time so if you have invested in any property or real estate stocks with corporate and retail tenants then it will be prudent to review those holdings as the demand for office space will not be the same for the long term commercial landlords have loads to think about on how to shift their business model to adapt to this new norm equally any investor who in real estate would have loads to think about whether it's still the right holding for their portfolio or not so in essence every investor makes mistakes but the key here is about recognizing them writing them down and ensuring you learn from them and ensure you don't repeat them going forward so you need to set an alert so that if the share price falls by say 20 percent below what you paid for the alert being triggered is the reason for you to review your original investment case and if the outlook hasn't changed for the worse it could be an excellent time to add to your position but if your reason for buying in the first place no longer stacks up then you should consider cutting your holding and moving on most investment platforms have the options for you to set such alerts in some platforms they are called stop losses up next is about you cutting early so if you lose 20 percent on a stock it needs to rebound by about 25 percent for you to get back to your break-even position and if that 20 percent loss turns into a 50 percent loss the stock needs to grow by 100% for you to get back to break even. And this recovery could happen, but the odds are extremely low and could take some time for you to be able to achieve this. And as the old market saying goes, the first cut is always the cheapest, and further cuts beyond that become even more expensive. So sadly, lots of investors underestimate how far the share price needs to travel in order for them to be able to get back to the level where they first purchased it. So try not to get carried away when a share price starts to recover as you may have to wait for longer than you think in order to be able to get back on track. Let's look at an example. In 2016, Warren Buffett accumulated significant positions in the US airline industry and invested in United Airlines, American Airlines, Southwest Airlines and Delta Airlines. And on the back of this COVID pandemic, the demand for air travel has been down by over 80% and is not expected to return to the previous levels till about 2023. So he has had to cut his losses early and sold out all his positions in airlines which were worth just about $4 billion, having initially invested $7.5 billion in the industry. So he's incurred about a 47% loss. So as you can see, even very experienced investors face such challenges but have to make the prudent decision to cut their losses when the fundamentals of the company or industry has changed. Next up is to run your winners. While it can be very tempting and indeed satisfying to book profits on your winners or your highest growing stocks, the most successful investors let their position run with the aim of winning big and even bigger over the long term till they need it. So if you absolutely need to take profit, you need to sell some but not all of your shares. Early investors who doubled their money and sold out of stocks such as Amazon could have made more than 10,000 times their money had they stayed invested. In fact, if you had invested $1,000 in Amazon in 1997, you would have generated life-changing gains today. Can you even guess what that would be worth right now? Just have a guess. A staggering $1.4 million. So you would have virtually been a millionaire from investing in one stock and holding it for 23 years. Now that's what long-term investment gets you. That's what compounding returns gets you. Sticking to your guns and running your winners. I had a friend who reached out to me and he said, Hey Con, I've invested in Zoom shares and they've grown 170% and I'm thinking of selling and locking on my profits. What do you think? My response to him was simple. Achieving that kind of performance over a short period was fantastic, right? Which means you got in at the right time. However, you need to run your winner and stay in this for the long term. Next up is to beware about the hot sectors and initial public offerings. There is a great deal of hindsight bias in looking at long-term sector returns. And this is because it is not necessarily clear at the time which industries are likely to grow or decline. First, investing in hot new sectors often disappoints, partly because enthusiastic investors push up valuations to levels that future growth can't justify, thereby creating a bubble. And because these breakthroughs may in turn be displaced by new ones. Newer industries, especially those heavily hard, will tend to be dominated by stocks that have been listed more recently. And I'm sure you know some of the examples in this space. The returns from such stocks that have had an IPO within the last three years after IPO have historically been poor. So the general rule of thumb is that the old and tested companies which have been in the market for over eight years 
beats the new and exciting stocks over the longer term. So as an investor, you shouldn't buy into a stock just because it has performed well at its initial public offering. Because the economy changes, industries will go into decline, but it's worth always considering why some shares have consistently done well to assess whether the stock has a robust business model to survive over time. So if you can identify good firms in industries with high barriers and avoid paying too much for them, you will most certainly be going on to a long-term winner. So I hope you have had a better understanding of these seven simple successful investing rules which you can start applying from today to grow your wealth. If you have any questions at all about what I've spoken about in this video, please let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And also subscribe to my channel below as I have new videos out every week to help you on your investment journey. In my next video, I'll be sharing with you ideas to make you more money from the stories and experiences of the legendary Warren Buffett. So please hit the buzzer to be notified when it becomes available. And thank you for watching. Thank you.